Okay, we're going to look at a property of waves called refraction. Refraction is a change in direction of a wave at the boundary between two mediums. It doesn't have to be at the boundary between two mediums. It's whenever there's this change in speed, and this can cause the direction to change. And it can be with any wave, but we're going to look mainly at light. Okay, to understand refraction, we need to look at something called wave fronts. Now, you've already seen wave fronts, for example, when you drop a pebble in water. It's these circular lines that are spreading out. And what they are are lines that join points of constant phase. For example, in this diagram, the wave front is showing all the peaks of the waves joined together. But it doesn't have to be all the peaks. It could have been a line that joins all the troughs together. It's basically showing the distance between one point and the next uh, same point on the next wave. Okay, and also another to keep in mind here is that the wave fronts are always at 90 degrees to the direction of the wave. So in this example, for example, the wave front is here, the wave is going that way. Okay, here we've got waves going from medium A to medium B, past a boundary of some sort. The waves are going towards the right, and the direction isn't changing this time. That's because the direction of the waves initially is at 90 degrees to the boundary itself. So in that case, the direction doesn't need to change. What is changing? If you look at the wavelength, and sorry, the wave fronts, you can see that the speed has decreased. The one, the waves on the right hand side are moving more slowly. If this was light, we'd say that the medium B is more optically dense. Okay, so that slowed the waves down. What else has changed? You can see the distance between the wave fronts is shorter on the right hand side. That's because the wavelength has decreased. One thing that doesn't change during when you go from medium A to medium B is the frequency. The frequency is unchanged. The number of waves per unit time doesn't change because that's determined by the source on the far right hand left hand side here that's creating number of waves. So the number of waves emitted per unit time won't change unless the source changes it. Okay, the same setup here, except now the wave is coming in at an angle. So to understand what's going on, we draw normal. A normal is a line that's perpendicular to the boundary. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm going to draw on the incoming ray. So we can see I've drawn the ray that's at uh, 90 degrees to the wave front. And on the right hand side, the medium B, we can see the wave is actually bent a bit towards the normal. Okay, so why does that happen? So firstly, I'm going to freeze this picture and I'm going to show you the wave fronts. The part of the wave front that hits medium B has slowed down. That's because the wave is slower in medium B, while the part that hasn't quite hit it yet is still moving quite fast. Okay, so that's what causes the bend and change in direction. Okay, so we need to remember whenever light enters a more optically dense medium and slows down, that the, it bends towards the normal. It's very important to remember that. All the other things that happened in the previous diagram, where the speed decreases, the wavelength decreases, occur as well. And of course, the frequency hasn't changed during refraction. To understand how much light is slowed down by a substance, we use a number called the refractive index. Now, the refractive index is unitless and is obtained by using, doing the speed of light in vacuum, which is three times into eight meters per second, divided by the speed of light in the substance. Now, the speed of light in the substance is always going to be uh, smaller, okay, it's always going to be slower. Also, using the equation speed equals frequency times wavelength, where here, because the frequencies are the same, they'll cancel out, and we can get this equation as well. This table here shows the refractive index in different uh, materials. And at the top, we've got the fastest, which is in vacuum, three times in eight meters per second. And as you can see in air, it's pretty much the same. So from now on, we'll be using air as 1.00 as well. Okay, at the bottom, we've got diamond, where, which is slowed the light down the most. So that's going to have the largest impact in terms of change in direction because it's slowing it down so much. Uh, these numbers here, the refractive index, cannot be smaller than one because it, light is going to be the fastest in vacuum and all the substance is going to be small, uh, slower. In this question, we're told the refractive index of glass is 1.51. Calculate the speed of light in glass. So we're going to use this equation here. So we've got the refractive index of glass, 1.51, speed of light in vacuum over the speed of light in glass. Okay, rearranging this, so speed of light in glass is equal to three times into eight over 1.51 and that gives me 1.99 times into eight meters per second. So the speed of light in glass is almost two thirds the speed of light in vacuum, slower.